is a three phased uh, system where the supply is a balanced source whereas the demand the load is an unbalanced source so it's a three phase four wire system that means three wires are there for phase a phase b and phase c whereas the fourth wire is a return that is a neutral wire so three phase four wire system uh, it's normally called and it is unbalanced because look at the a phase purely resistive load b phase has resistance but minus j3 this is a capacitance load is there so it's a capacitive load whereas the c phase is the inductive load so three different uh, values of load impedances are there in three different phases so therefore even if the supply is balanced as you can see here 80 80 80 the magnitudes are equal and the phase angle is zero here minus 120 and minus 240 so this source is a balanced uh, source of voltages so van vbn and vcn are the voltages here uh, the currents ia ib and ic will be unbalanced currents and the this neutral will be taking the current whatever is the unbalanced uh, to this point now if you consider this neutral point as the ground point uh, the zero volts so then uh, we have we have the voltages of all other lines measured with reference to this so this if you consider as a ground so this also automatically becomes a ground because it's connected here we are not assuming any resistance or impedance for this lines itself uh, but this is about the case okay let's come to the question actually so what is the question question is calculate currents in all branches and complex power in each phase for the following system with three phase balance supply and unbalanced load so it's pretty straightforward uh, question so you may pause the video now try the answer yourself and later you can compare your answers with my answers so let's let's uh, try to solve it myself now if you look at it it's in a way it's quite uh, straightforward because here the neutral wire is there so this voltage a n directly applies across the impedance z a so therefore the i a current will i can directly write here i a will be nothing but v a divided by z a so this is v a n divided by z a so v a n is the voltage of a with reference to the n which is a neutral point which is grounded so of course i n will be different so we will we'll find what is the actual value of i n uh, through kcl but first the i a can be easily determined like this similarly the same logic so the, this is a ground point and v b is the voltage here and then z b is the impedance and then it's closed here so i b by that logic will be v b n by z b n so we all know that these are alternate alternating quantities ac voltages and ac impedances and everything so these are all complex numbers so each of these numbers will have real and imaginary components so similarly the ia ib will also be complex numbers so all the time when you are working in ac circuits you need to keep that in mind that you are working with complex numbers so therefore i can actually omit this uh, symbols here so i can it is understood that these are all complex numbers so similarly i c so this voltage uh, is you just have to look at this this entire part of the circuit actually so this voltage is directly applied to this phase and then return is like this so therefore i can write v c n by z c so like this i have uh, a simple calculation find all the currents you can represent this in the form of a uh, matrix so that is i a i b and i c so the three currents if i represent as a vector so then is nothing but the voltage vector v a n v b n and v c n and this i have to divide so this is like a i'm using a dot slash notation that is division element wise division or okay for the time being let me just use like this z a z b and z c okay so i would like to do this calculation 
So for the, uh, this calculation, I'll do it using, uh, you can use a calculator, scientific calculator to do this, but I'll be using a octave interface, which is, which is nothing but uh, similar to the MATLAB, which has a syntax and we can uh, run this command like this. So in the middle, as you already see in my other videos, so this is the place where I write the script and the, on the right hand side will be the solution. So uh, let me define the voltages to begin with. So VAN. I'll simply write VA in this just to have a short notation. So 80 and here the imaginary component is not there. So I'll keep it zero. Then VB. Now how to define a the if I go back to my video here, uh, this voltage VBN is 80, 120. So let me again just give it a recap. If you had seen my other videos, this is just uh, redundant, but I'll just explain. So this 80 is the magnitude and 120 degrees negative is the phase angle. So this, if you want to represent it as a complex number, you will write it as 80 e to the power of minus i into one twenty into theta that is 120 degrees but to convert the degrees into radians i have to divide by 180 degrees and multiply by pi so this factor uh, i have to pi radians this is just conversion of angle into radians so of course this minus minus actually should go inside so minus 120 but anyway this is the notation so let's if you do this notation and if you execute this then you will get actually the real and re imaginary component so or mathematically speaking it is just 80 cos of i'm sorry sine no cos the real component will be cos and then plus j 80 sine of 120 degrees but all these things anyway uh, we are going back i think all of you are aware i'm assuming about how to handle the complex numbers and how to handle ac quantities so let's define this in in our octave interface so 80 and here the syntax is exp that is exponent and here i have to take i multiplied by minus 120 divided by 180 degrees multiplied by pi now, if you notice, this is a code, I am directly using the symbol i. So, by default, if I just use symbol i without defining it, automatically the MATLAB will consider it as the imaginary symbol for imaginary uh, component. The value of i will be square root of minus 1 if you already know. And pi is the pi, that is the, just the constant. Now, vc, vc is the c phase uh, voltage that is again 80 multiplied by exp so here i multiplied by minus 240 divided by 180 and multiplied by pi just for conversion to radians now i have defined the values so similarly a phase impedance b phase impedance and c phase impedance i want to define so what is a phase impedance so i remember it was 5 ohms just and let me refer to b phase impedance 2 minus j3 so here i'll use 2 minus 3i so whereas let's see so j we use in electrical notation whereas in mathematical notation we use the i and that's the only difference and i should follow the number whereas here in math in electrical representation j will be before the number that's the difference again i am assuming you know how to handle this numbers so 4 plus j3 is the zc so 4 plus 3i I'll write here. Now I have defined everything. So I just, I can write Ia is equal to Va divided by Za. As simple as that. So I, I can just copy this and just change the names. Instead of Ia, I'll find Ib instead of I, Ib and Ic. So this is C, this is B and here this is B and this is see so let me save this program and then uh, run this so on the right here you can see the results so va is 80 volts 
as expected and VB is minus 40 and minus 69.282. So this is uh, the B phase voltage expressed in the form of complex number. And VC is also like this, the, this is minus 40 plus 69. Now I have impedances 5, 2 minus J3 and 4 plus J3 and the currents are as like this 18, 9.8, minus 19 and, and so on. So now if you look at the currents, these currents are expressed in, the, in rectangular format or complex form. Now I want to know what is the magnitude of the currents. So IA magnitude of course it is 16 at 0 degrees but IB I want to know what is the magnitude and what is the phase angle of IB. So to get magnitude and phase angle, uh, I'll just form a small matrix like this, two elements. First I'll take the ABS of IB. So this is just, this first element in that matrix uh, just calculates the absolute value of IB. And next, angle of IB. So this uh, will give me the angle and absolute value. However, this angle will be in radians. So I just multiply by pi and divide, I'm sorry, I just multiply by 180 and divide by pi to uh, to convert the angle back into degrees. So if you notice above, it is divide by 180 and multiply by pi, whereas here it is multiply by 180 and divide by pi. It's just the opposite conversion, just converting radians to degrees and degrees to radians. Similarly, I do it for IC. I can even do it for IA. Uh, let's do that. Although we already know the result for IA because the load is purely resistive, uh, the imaginary component will not be there here. So I hope everything is correct. So again, I save and then execute this program. So here I'm getting 16, 0, 22. This is the absolute value of the magnitude and this is the angle. So let me note down these uh, results. So I have after after this calculation, so I have IA is 16 at 0 degrees, then IB is 22.19. I'll write it. It is 188. I just rounded off and the angle is minus 63.69 or minus 63.7 degrees. The units is amperes and here also it is amperes and the IC what we calculated 16 and 83.13. So the magnitude is exactly same but the angle is 83.13 degrees. So the first part of this problem is completed that we are able to find the currents in each branch, IA, IB and IC. Now what about IN? So if you look at this point, IA is coming towards this point through the impedance. IB is also coming towards this point through this impedance and IC is coming like this. All the three currents are meeting here and then going back. So if I apply Kirchhoff's current law at this point, so I'll, I'll simply get IN is equal to IA plus IB plus IC. So it's a simple calculation. So let's do it right away. I'll go back to my uh, code and here I'll just, I'll just define IN is equal to IA plus IB plus IC. And similarly while displaying the solution, let me get the absolute value of IN and the angle of IN. So after program is executed, now I get the finally 28.03, I can round it off to 28. So this is the magnitude and this is the angle in degrees for the neutral current. So which is 28 amperes and at an angle of minus 8.2. Thus we have this uh, system where the neutral is carrying some current. All right, let's continue. Now I would like to find what is the complex power in this particular A, A phase. 
So the one way to find the complex power is is that if I know the current and I know the impedance. So when current and impedance are there, we can find the complex power. So what is the formula for that? So complex power in A phase is nothing, in general complex power is nothing but voltage multiplied by conjugate of current. So, but in, in our case, the voltage is nothing but product of current and impedance. So it is nothing but I into Z, the impedance and multiplied by again i conjugate so this if i use i z and i conjugate then i'll get the complex power consumed by it so from this i can write the formula so if i want the a phase power then i will use the va n and i a current similarly here also i use i a z a and i a current so either i can use this formula or i can use this formula both will work out in this particular problem so let's try with this. So I know what is ZA, I know what is IA and IA conjugate. So from that I can find the A phase power. Similarly, what is B phase power? So B phase power is nothing but, I can write again V, B, N, I, B conjugate. So the pow power complex power is voltage multiplied by conjugate of current. So uh, here if I substitute for I, V, B, N, so I'll get I, B zb into ib conjugate so same way for sc i get ic zc into ic conjugate so let's uh, do that calculation and write it i'm just going back to my uh, earlier code so here let's do the calculation of powers it's straightforward sa equal to ia multiplied by za multiplied by so the function in, in uh, octave we use is COnj conj. So that, that will calculate the conjugate of I. So this is SA. I'll just copy this. Then I'll find what is SB, what is SC. So I'm just changing this variables. So now I have all these things required so let me just once again run the code so here sa is there sb and sc all are coming here so let me write down these numbers so 1280 so you notice that it's exactly all active power uh, reactive power is zero so it is zero so the the overall unit is volt amperes because it's a complex uh, power so whereas individually the unit for this is watts and individually the unit for this is watts. Again, you might be aware of all that. So again, going back, 984.6. So I'll just round off to 985 and this is 1477. Minus sign is important. 985 minus of J 14. 77 volt amperes similarly what is the uh, sc the sc is c phase 1024 plus 768 1024 plus j768 so these are uh, complex powers consumed by the load so i will just indicate this so when I, I I stress this word consumed by the load that means uh, when this value is positive that means it is consumed so 1280 watts are consumed by A phase 985 watts are consumed by B phase and 1024 watts are consumed by C phase. Whereas you see, 0 watts are consumed by A phase. That means the A phase is not taking any reactive power. On the other hand, you notice there is a minus J1477. The meaning of that is minus J1477 watts are consumed by B phase. Or in other words, 1477 
wars are produced by B phase. So, uh, because this minus sign and consume, it will be 1477 wars are produced by B phase. Now, uh, why, how can B phase produce this uh, reactive power? If you just quickly go back and uh, look at the circuit, so we have minus J3, that means capacitor. There is a capacitance in the B phase. That capacitance is producing an output of 1477 watts of the reactive power. And coming back to this, uh, 768 watts are consumed because it is plus sign, that means consumed by the phase C. So actually if you see the A phase, B phase and C phase, uh, you, you notice that there is a net reactive power generation. So if I just total all the powers, the total demand. So let's let's do that. The total load demand. So I can write it here. S tot or ST is SA plus SB plus SC. So that is the total complex power supplied to the load or consumed by the load. Uh, it is 3288. Here you can see it or I'll round off to 3289 and 709. So S total is 3289 minus J709 volt ampere. So this is the total power consumed by the load. So you notice that this is watts and this is watts and it is negative that means the three phase load is actually net generating the wars and supplying towards the load side all right so another thing you notice is that see these are all when i use this formula ia is again ia these are all the power consumed by each phase these quantities are exactly same these are also the power supplied by each phase so there's there's no interference or interaction between the phases because it's a three phase four wire system. Just before we wind up this topic, uh, I would like to draw the vector diagram to give an intuitive feel of what is happening in this uh, circuit. So let's do the vector diagram or phasor diagram, uh, some people might be seeing. Let's begin by. Uh, noting all the voltage vectors. So we have VA. So this is the VAN which is 80 volts and the angle is 0 degrees. So exactly horizontal line is 0 degrees. Then we have VBN. VBN and this length is also 80 volts and this angle is 120 degrees. So because I'm going in backwards direction clockwise like this. So it is actually one, when, when I write it here, I'll write it as a minus 120 degrees. So this is considered as a positive direction and this is considered as a negative direction. So again, you might be knowing that. Next VCN. So VCN again, further 120 degrees, if I go back, then I'll get like this VCN. So, the value is 80 volts and this is 120 degrees. And by definition, the total circle angle will be 360 degrees. So this will also be 120 degrees. So either you can consider it as minus 240 degrees or you can consider it as plus 120 degrees, both are same. Now let's add the currents. So for currents, let me choose a different color. Now, when I refer to the phasors that we calculated, so IA is 16 amperes at 0 degrees. Now, because this is amperes, I can use a different scale for amperes and different scale for volts. So, let's represent it like this. So, this is IA and the value is 16 
and the angle is 0 degrees. This is in amperes. So because it is 0 degrees, it is just exactly, in fact these two are on top of each other, so, but just for clarity I have written slightly above it. Okay, now what about IB? When I go back here, so IB is 22. 0.19 and angle is minus 63.7 degrees. Now exactly I can draw it using exact measurements but here uh, I'll roughly draw it. So minus 63. So that means somewhere in the middle of this somewhere like this I'll get it. So let's use a different color. This is IB. And what about the magnitude? So let's refer to the magnitude once again, 22. So slightly larger than this one. So I, I think I have I've considered that. So maybe I'll make it slightly larger. Yeah. So now this IB is the B phase current, 22 amperes, 22.1 whatever it is, 22 amperes, and at an angle of minus 63 degrees. So this angle is 63 degrees. So it is minus because this is the reference and from there I'm going back. However, what is interesting is not this angle. So this angle is what is interesting because this is the between v, B phase voltage and B phase current. What is the phase angle? So how much is this? So this we can anyway calculate. So from 125 subtract 63, I think I'll get about 57 degrees as the angle. So. So this is the phase angle between this and also notice that the current IB is leading the voltage VB. That means looking at the phasor diagram itself, I can conclude that there is a, so this is 57 degrees. In the B phase, there is a capacitor. So I can easily find that. Now let's, let's uh, tackle the C phase. Sixteen amperes, eighty-three degrees. So somewhere here, like this. Not exactly vertical, slightly towards the right. Yeah. So, but the length has to be same as this one. So this is sixteen IC equal to sixteen amperes and at an angle of 83 degrees. So this angle is 83. So obviously this angle will be 120 minus 83. So that will be the phase angle between IC and VC. So that will be 120 minus 83 about 37 degrees. So anyway, I will not mention that here. So this is about uh, the phasor diagram. What about the neutral current IN? So neutral current is nothing but the addition of all three. So if you actually go on adding all these three, so for example, let's take IA as it is. To IA, I'll add IB. So IB parallelly, I'll just bring it like this. So basically this is IA plus this is IB. Then to that, I'll add IC. So something like this it will be. So something like this. So the length is again, I have to properly maintain this length and all. So this and this are should be parallel actually. So this point signifies IA plus IB plus IC. When you are adding, you are adding three uh, vectors on top of each other. So from here to here will be the IN. So let's refer to that. So what is IN actually? So here you see 28 is the magnitude and eight minus 8.2 degrees is the angle. So our uh, rough estimate appears to be reasonable. So let me just remove all these lines. I'll use a red color for, the, for that. This is IN. So this is 28 at an angle of minus 8.2 degrees. I'll write it minus 8 degrees. So this is the neutral current. So 
uh, what is the advantage of uh, having a vector diagram like this is that just you can look at it and uh, you see that IA and VA are in phase so therefore there is a restive load in A phase IB is leading VB therefore there is a capacitance in B phase IC is leading IC is lagging v, uh, VC so there is an inductive load in C phase like that we can find and we can tell that the voltages are balanced but the currents are unbalanced that means the supply is balanced whereas the load is unbalanced so these are some of the interesting things that we can conclude uh, by drawing this vector diagram i hope you learned something uh, by looking at this video uh, after a long uh, gap i have done this video so i'll continue we'll, we'll do the next video in which if i simply cut this uh, neutral wire and take only three phase three wire supply then what happens that is the the next uh, part of this uh, next video that that i'd like to see so if you like my channel please subscribe to my channel please press the like button i have i have come back after a uh, short break so hopefully i'll be doing more videos regularly thank you